Amen. Amen. That is one of my favorites, but uh, we wanted to make sure we had time today uh, for everything that is before us. Um, good, good afternoon, Village Community Church. I want to welcome everyone who is here with us in person once again, as well as online. I want to uh, say once again hello to my good friend, Toki. Please, online ministry, flood her chat with... Um, Lots of village love. Uh, she is one of the most loving and kindest persons you will ever meet. There are many of them, and God tends to bring them my way and allow them to love on me. She's also a uh, U.S. Navy retired, so she's a straight talker. <laughs> she don't mince words. Um, but I thank God for her, and I am glad um, she's here today. Um, before, I want to open up first. Um, I had a joke uh, with my friend. I said, when I become a reverend, I think my first, I said, I'm going to stand up there. And my first sermon, I'm going to say, I won't be before you long. <laughs> but today is Pentecost, so I don't know if I can fulfill that promise today because I am excited to be bringing this Pentecost word uh, for us. So I'm going to try it again another Sunday. But if you can open up your Bibles with me, uh, I'll read our scripture first, and then we'll go into prayer. Um, I want to start, it was already read by our deacon. I want to start at Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Uh, it's a familiar passage for us all, um, but I think um, definitely relevant today. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place, and suddenly came from heaven a sound of mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting, and divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Let's bow our heads in prayer. God, we just want to thank you for already what you have done in this service. God, we want to thank you because we definitely feel your presence in this place, not only on, um, in person, but with our online worshipers. So God, as we come to the time where it's time for the preach word, I want to ask that you settle my spirit there, God that you relieve all anxiety, and God, that you use me in a powerful way today. Yes. God, I just want to ask that your word comes out of me, dear God, and that it comes and it ministers to your people who need to hear from you on this day. God, we just want to ask that as this word comes through and as we read the scriptures there, God, that we as a people remember our beginnings on that very Pentecost when your spirit fell upon the people in the upper room and you lit them up there, God, with your spirit and the gospel was preached and 3,000 were saved. And God, we are looking that we know that 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 was done then can certainly be done today. So, God, we just ask that as the word comes out, that the hearts are pricked and people are revived and renewed, dear God, for your call. All these we ask in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So we've been going through the last couple of weeks where we've been looking at the events of Jesus' resurrection. So we looked at Mary Magdalene um, at the tomb, and we heard about her experience when she was the first to see Christ, and she took back the resurrection message to the disciples saying that Jesus is risen. And then we saw uh, Peter and how Jesus was able to restore Peter over fish and commission him for ministry. And so after Jesus' resurrection, the Bible tells us that there were 40 more days that Jesus was on earth and he be continued to teach and preach to the apostles. And he preached about the kingdom of God. And then if we see in Acts chapter 1, 
and I'll read verses 4 on. If you turn Acts chapter 1, verses 4 on, it says that while they were staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem. He told them to wait. Wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized for the Holy Spirit, with the Holy Spirit, not many days from now. And so it says that, so when they came together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or the season that the Father has fixed by his own authority. Verse 8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the end of the earth. And then after that, right before the eyes of the apostles and those with them, Jesus was taken up into the sky and received by a cloud, and he had ascended back to the Father. And scripture tells us that there were two men, that, two men who appeared to them in white robes. And it says that, why do you stand looking up in heaven? Basically, why are you just standing still looking up? See, because Jesus had given a commandment, and it was important that if everything was going to go as planned, they couldn't get stuck right there in that very day. They had to be reminded, just as our sermon series of faith has been telling us, that even though you don't see it, you need to move in faith, trusting that the promise will come. So before I even start this Pentecostal message today, I do want to say whether it's somebody in person or whether it's somebody online, this is the point that you got to realize that in faith, we need to move understanding that the promises of God are yes and amen. Even when you don't see it today, God holds tomorrow. So as we go into today's verses, we read Acts chapter 2, 1 through 4, and it talks about that Jesus told them to wait. And so they are in the room, and they are doing just what they're told. They're waiting, but Scripture also shows us that there's some preparation that's going on as they're waiting. But after 10 days, Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit descends, and that at that moment, the church was birthed. And when the church was birthed, we're not talking about a building being erected. We're talking about a community of people that was empowered with the Holy Spirit to do the work of God. It said that the Holy Spirit came as a rushing wind. It said the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit came upon them. And see, I want you to understand that the Holy Spirit wasn't just brand new that was coming here. This had been prophesied in the Old Testament. I want y'all to see what a promise keeper our God truly is. Because if you tag and go later in this week to Ezekiel 36 verse 26, the prophet Ezekiel proclaimed under the power of the Holy Spirit that I will give you a new heart and I will put my spirit in you and I will take out the stony and the stubborn heart and I will give you a tender and a responsive heart. Yes. Ezekiel goes on to say that I will put my spirit in you so that you will follow my decrees and be careful to obey my regulations. Ezekiel prophesied that the Holy Spirit is going to be an, inter an internal transformation. It's a heart transaction where what was corrupted and hardened by sin 
needed to come on out of there, but through the work of the Holy Spirit, we were going to be implanted with a new heart that would be able to be responsive and tender to God's word. Ezekiel also tells us that the Holy Spirit enables us to be kind and merciful and long-suffering and in our monthly theme, to love. And then we see in the prophet Joel, in his prophecy and God's plan to restore his people, it says in Joel chapter 2 verse 28, then, after doing all these things, I will pour out my spirit upon people, and your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams, and your young men will see vision. See, Droll is adding this to that in addition to the internal heart work, that there's a pouring out that happens with the Holy Spirit where others are able to speak out and make known what's been placed in them. So I see Pentecost today as a time of celebration because it reminds us that no matter how long we gotta wait, no matter how long it seems like it's taking to get here, it reminds us that the very words and the promises of God will not be derailed, delayed, or denied. God is in control even when we feel like we have to wait. And it shows that we can trust in God. We can trust in the almighty creator of the universe to show up. And the coming of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost shows me, and I hope shows you, that what was prophesied in the Old Testament and what was promised by Jesus was provided by the Father just as they said it would. In Acts chapter 2 verse 4, it said that everyone who was present was filled with the Holy Spirit and they began speaking in tongues and other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. And those in the room, instead of succumbing to the suddenness, and instead of being afraid, and instead of worrying about what is happening, instead they submitted themselves to the filling of the Holy Spirit, and they boldly moved in the power that the Spirit gave them. So the title of my sermon today is, The Power of, All, of God's Love Enables Us to Be Witnesses. The power of God's love enables us to be witnesses. See, we've already seen that the work of the Holy Spirit starts on the inside. And then we see in the story of the apostles when they were in that room that there's a time, there's a work, there's a preparation that happens in us that's not necessarily seen out in the open. It's a personal work where God is working on us and we are wrestling with God, but he is trying to get us and move us to the place that he is calling us to. And one thing about our God, he is patient and he is loving. But one thing I can also tell you, he will get us to where he's trying to move us to. So it says that under, but under the power of the Holy Spirit, there's a call on each and every one of our lives. And that call is to be his witnesses. It is to make the gospel message known. People out there need to hear it. They need to see it in our lives and they need to experience it. What happens internally through the power of the Holy Spirit must be seen, heard, and experienced externally. Why? Because Jesus commanded it. He said, you will receive power, check. And then he says, and you will be my witnesses. See, it's important that we understand the role of the witness. The role of the witness is important. And so we see, and I go to uh, the scripture real quick with Peter. 
it says that the Holy Spirit was poured out on the apostles, and it says that Peter moved from a place where he's now out preaching. And it said that the gospel message went out from the room to the ears of those that were in Jerusalem that day. And it says that Peter, under the power of the Holy Spirit, was able to part. The preaching was so bold and with such authority, it said that he moved right through to piercing their hearts. And it said that 3,000 were saved that day. I believe that the same thing occurs with us today. We have the fulfillment of the promise of the Holy Spirit. And God's promise reminds us that we are in Christ. We are now in Christ and we are reconnected to a loving God. The Holy Spirit is that promise that I will never leave you nor forsake you. But see, church, it doesn't stop there. It also gives us our ability to be witnesses. We need to be a witness to what God's love through Jesus Christ has done in our lives. We need to be the witnesses that is out there speaking the gospel message, not only by word, but how we live our lives each and every day, even when you think no one knows you and is watching you. Witnessing is not for our glory. Witnesses takes the glory back to God. So as we look at the events of Pentecost, the focus should be on God's power and how it enables us to see possible and impossible. It reminds us of the words of Mary when she was told that she was going to be conceived, that she was going to conceive as a virgin. Mary said, with God, all things are possible. And that is what we are called to witness about. So we have to be reminded today that we have the ability through the Holy Spirit to make the, imp to make the impossible possible. So let's talk about some witnesses. See, if we were to take a trip to the courthouse in Rockville, Maryland on Monday, and we were to walk the halls of the courthouse, we would find some reluctant witnesses who really don't want to be there. And when we walk down a little further, we're going to find some fearful witnesses who are scared to open up their mouth and testify on the stand. And if you go up a little farther, you might find some unprepared witnesses that really don't know what they're going to be asked when they get into the courtroom. We might find some unequipped witnesses who feel intimidated because they haven't been to law school and they don't want to stand before these judges and they don't want to stand before the lawyers. I'm sure April could tell us all about the witnesses that she come across in her days in the courtroom. But the one thing that is important is that no matter what comes before, they still are called witnesses. And so in order to make the case, they got a story to tell. In order to make the case, they got to tell it. In order to make the case, they got to tell us what did they see. In order to make the case, they got to tell us what did you experience. In order to make the case, they got to tell you where were you when it happened. And all I'm saying to us today is you might feel unprepared to be a witness today. You might feel like you don't have enough scripture in you to be a witness today. You might feel like this is going to be inconvenient to the plans I have for myself to be called to be a witness today. But I say to you today, the almighty God has called you because you have a story and a testimony to give. And so even though you might not seem ready, you have been called to be a witness today. You have been called to witness of God's love. You have been called to witness about the rescue mission where he snatched you out of the darkness of sin. 
You have been called to witness about how God was a redeemer and how he saved you with the very life of his son. You have been called to witness to how you've been reconciled back to a loving father. You have been called to be a witness. And there are times in our lives when being called to be a witness will take us through some challenging circumstances. Being a witness is not always an easy job. Being a witness may sometimes be a thankless job. A witness might at times get beat down in the cross-examination. But I remind you of the powerful words of the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah, too, was called to be a witness. And in Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 8, he said, whenever I speak and cry out proclaiming violence and destruction, so the word have, of God has brought me insult and reproach all day long. See, God had given Jeremiah through the prophet of the Holy Spirit a message. And when he was calling on the people to repent and turn back to God, he was ridiculed and he was even flogged. And in despair, Jeremiah initially considered, maybe I better just stop speaking. I don't want to do this witness thing anymore. But see, Jeremiah realized, what Jeremiah realized is the very thing that the apostles realized in the room. And I pray what we realize today. Because Jeremiah verse 9 talks about the power of the Holy Spirit. And Jeremiah says, but if I will not mention his word or speak any more his name, his word is in my heart like a fire, a fire shut up in my bones, and I am weary and I cannot hold it. And see, that is the power that is within us today. A loving and a merciful God sent his son to redeem us from sin. And Jesus accomplished all of this through his life, his death, and his burial, and his resurrection. And he ascended back to heaven. And then on Pentecost, 50 days after his resurrection, the promise was fulfilled. And God sent us his very presence in the Holy Spirit. And this allows us to have the passion, the compassion, and the ability to share the gospel message of love. So Village Community Church, we are still what has been birthed on Pentecost. The age of the church is still going, and we have a role to play in that. We are alive and empowered, and through the Holy Spirit, we have the ability to be spirit-led, spirit-filled witnesses. We have been called to tell it like you saw it. We have been called to teach it. We have been called to preach it. Whatever God gives you the ability to do, you got to get out there and do. Church, the world needs us, as you can see in our prayer requests. There's a little girl in the hospital bed who needs to hear about our God who's a comforter. There are people out there who need to understand that our God is a healer. There are people out there who need to understand that when I was down to my last, that God was a way maker. There are people there that needs to understand that when other walk, and when others walk, that God will stay there right with you. There are people that need to understand that there is an inseparable and unconditional love that you can find in our God through Jesus Christ. Let's stop being the resistant witness who don't really want to show up and say anything. Let's stop being the fearful witness and acting like we don't have a word to say. 
Let's stop being the witness that is huffing and puffing because it's too inconvenient for us to get out there and witness. Let us stop being the entitled witness, acting like everything we've done is through our own strength and not from God. Village, I think the month of May and the last 19 years has taught us that no matter how small our gathering is, the power is what we need to move forward. It is not from our own abilities. It is not from our own strength. We are not wise enough. We don't have enough assets in the bank. What we are called is to be witnesses under the power of God. And we are called to go out there and show love in our church, in our families, and in our communities. It is time that we retake the families that the enemies were trying to snatch out of our hands the last two years. It is time for us to retake the schools that are running amok and teaching any old types of things to our kids. It is time that we retake marriages, and it is time that we show that our God is a healer. It is time that we show the power of prayer when a church comes together and prays together. It is time, church. We are called to be with. It is time for us to make the case for Christ. Don't give up, church. Each of us know right now a person, a situation, and a relationship that needs the witness. Each of us know somebody that could use a witness right now and be able to pull them out of the darkness into the light. Church, we don't retreat as witnesses. But instead of retreating, I ask you to rely on the power of the Holy Spirit today. The power that is within us to witness and to show bold acts of love. I challenge us all. We can lift up our eyes to the hills from which cometh our help. We can acknowledge the source of our help, but then I tell you, don't get stuck there. Then you got to look out, and then you got to remember the source that has put the power in within you, and then you look out and you find somebody to love. You look out and you find somebody to witness to. You look out and you snatch somebody out of the darkness into the light. That's what Pentecost is about. I ask you to step out in faith under the power of the Holy Spirit. And I ask you to be witnesses today. Find a person, a family, and a person who use the power that's within you to show love. Remember, the power of God's love empowers us to be witnesses. Thank you. Amen.